there's remorse. Okay, very, very important concept that's responsible for why women can disappear after you sleep with them or become flaky, okay, or, you know, otherwise kind of like falling off, right? If a girl is hot enough to fuck her, obviously you want to keep her around, okay? And there's a very key concept that's often overlooked and most people don't even have any idea about, okay, that comes from the old school guys like Mystery, okay, when he wrote Mystery Method, he talks about this as being a real concern. Okay, RSD came along, Real Social Dynamics, you know, led by the idiot known as RSD Tyler, who fucking sucks with girls, sucks at pickup, okay, it's just a stupid marketing effort, lies his ass off, etc. That's why I'm always ripping on the guy, because he's a total fucking idiot, okay? He did away with the whole worry about buyer's remorse, okay? He just kind of eliminated it from the community. It didn't fit into his whole thing because spending seven hours trying to get the girl doesn't fit into his little agenda of, of oh look we're superstars in our our bullshit fake infield okay so i'm going to go over what the seven hour rule is again okay i talked about in my last video and how it relates to buyer's remorse all right so uh mystery talks about in his book the mystery method okay i have the, i have it open right now on my computer i'm gonna i'm gonna read a couple excerpts from it um now keep in mind, I came up in the game with Mystery Method, okay? Um, Mystery is a very primary featured character in Neil Strauss's book, The Game, okay? That's how many of us found out about the pickup and seduction world to begin with. Um, but Mystery wrote his own book, which is a tactical manual called The Mystery Method. There's a lot of really good stuff in there. There's a lot of stuff that's outdated, okay? There's a lot of, I think Mystery ultimately failed to evolve. He's still stuck in 2006. He's teaching a lot of shit that is very suboptimal and inefficient or that just plain doesn't work, okay? And to the contrary, with my method, it's always been evolved and optimized and it's been set up so that I'm always scanning for weak spots and improving and improving and improving it, okay? So what does he say in his book? And I, by the way, I read this book and listened to the audio book like fucking... I want to say like 50 times probably. Okay, I was listening to it on a daily basis when I used to have a, a corporate job. Um, I, I was just using this as like the Bible, okay? And I broke my first 100 lay count. Okay, I slept with my first 100 girls just using Mystery Method. So um, he talks about in his, oh, by the way, please like and subscribe below if you have not subscribed already, okay? Um, now he talks about these player traps, okay? He talks about how, you know, some guys, he says you should be going from attract to comfort to seduce, okay? And this, I'm not saying every, all this is right, but in his model of attraction, comfort, and seduction, he says player trap number two is when you disregard comfort, okay? So he says, if you attempt to seduce a woman before building sufficient comfort, her attraction switches for you will turn off. To keep this from happening, you must build enough comfort so your seduction won't make her feel uncomfortable. Do not cross the line from comfort to seduction until you've developed enough comfort. Now, this is where the seven-hour rule comes in, okay? He says, when do, you when do you know that you have enough comfort to begin seduction? It takes an average of four to ten hours of cumulative comfort building before a woman is ready for seduction. Okay, not counting fool's mate, which, as I said earlier, is a strategy to be avoided by true Venusian artists. This fool's mate concept is where you skip attraction, you're just going straight for the seduction, okay? It's basically like doing quick pulls and shit like that. You might get the lay, it's not solid game, the girl will probably ghost you after and feel like shit about it, all right? Now he says here, there is no black and white rule for determining when that moment has arrived, only your calibration can tell you that, okay? More on the seven hour rule later. And I talked about in my last video, how with the anti-slut defense stuff, how I think it was good that he, he pointed this problem out, okay, but it's not a qualitative, uh, sorry, it's not a quantitative four to 10 hours that you need or a seven hour average. It's more of a qualitative amount of comfort. And I gave strategies in my last video, which I will link to at the end of this video in defeating anti-slut defense that go into exactly how um, you can, you know, bypass all that quantitative, or all that amount of comfort building, okay? and do it in a qualitative way by saying fancy things. Like, I feel we have a special connection. I know you're not slutty. I know you don't normally do this. I don't normally do this either. I have high standards. 
but I feel this really special connection and I feel like we're going to be seeing each other a lot and sleeping with each other a lot anyways, so it's okay to do it now, okay? And, and other various things. Watch that video for the details there. But now here's where, where uh, okay, so that's, that's the 7R rule. Now here's player trap number three, okay? Buy, okay, buyer's remorse. And I'm going to read what he says here and he gives a really good case study, which I think is fucking awesome. I think this is really, he did a really good job here. Um, player trap number three, buyer's remorse. Buyer's remorse, remorse occurs when a person purchases something on a whim only to regret the purchase later. Okay, so he's buying, he's borrowing this analogy from, you know, like a consumer purchase. Similarly, a woman who is attracted to you may be pushed or on her own go too far too soon. While in the moment she may indulge in her attraction and sexual arousal only to regret her feelings or actions later. Um, assuming you want to reach the seduction phase, buyer's remorse is something you want to avoid at all costs. Okay. Okay. So here we have a case study. Okay. This isn't from mysteries book, the mystery method. Jim meets Janine. Okay. The man's point of view, Jim meets a beautiful woman named Janine. They build attraction for each other. Jim soon finds himself making out with her that night. It's getting hot and heavy, but unable to go somewhere private at the time they exchange numbers and agreed to see each other another night. He excitedly tells his buddies that he just met his next girlfriend. Jim calls Janine the next evening, but she's cold and unresponsive on the phone. He tries to convince her to see him as they agreed, but she's now busy. He leaves several messages, but Janine never returns a single call. Weeks pass, and Jim and Janine never get together again. He is left confused, frustrated, and alone. Worse, he repeats this painful pattern over and over with other women. Okay, now, Mystery says this scenario is typical of how an, other, an otherwise great guy succumbs to the buyer's remorse trap. Many have fallen into it repeatedly and lost countless opportunities at love. Okay. Now, what went wrong? He writes here in the book. Okay. Now he says, here's what happened from the woman's point of view. Now, a lot of you can relate to this story. Okay. I've, I've been in this situation a whole bunch of times as well. It's usually more extreme where like you sleep with the girl too fast and then she feels bad about it. He's talking about a simple club makeout. Okay. Where there wasn't enough comfort built, but here's a really good insight to the woman's point of view. Okay. Okay, the woman's point of view. While Janine did enjoy making out with Jim, he did not take it upon himself to slow down the sexual ex escalation and remain in the comfort building stage. She truly did wish to see him again, but only in the moment. When Jim called the next day, Janine wasn't in the same aroused emotional state as the night before. Okay, and you can imagine this as a sex, premature sex thing where you did, said sex too quickly before enough comfort was built. Okay, this is just a club makeout. Due to cultural programming, she felt a little guilty for doing what she did with someone she didn't really know. She knew the only reason Jim even called was con to continue something that she was now uncomfortable just even thinking about. If she did see him again, she didn't know how he would behave. Would he grope her and make her feel even more uncomfortable? She just didn't know him well enough to trust his future actions. Okay, Being one to indulge in her emotions, she allowed them to once again make her decisions. Uncomfortable even talking to him on the phone, Janine was cold to him and lied, saying she was too busy to even talk. When the confused Jim tried to change her mind, Janine took this as an attempt to manipulate her. She just didn't want to be pressured into having sex with someone with whom she didn't feel comfortable and safe, especially when she was not even aroused. Jim was hard-pressed to change her emotional state on the phone for all he knew at the time. With so many elements out of his control, Janine may have just had a fight with her roommate or just changed the kitty litter box. Over the next week or two, every time he left a message, her feelings of discomfort grew. She had no intention of ever seeing this guy again. Okay? Now, Jim shouldn't blame Janine for stringing her along. After all, it was he who ultimately created this situation, but not remaining in the comfort stage for an appropriate length of time. Okay. He says, as hand-holding escalates to kissing, and on and on, you will quickly approach a point of no return regarding buyer's remorse. Okay, so he says, beware the buyer's remorse point of no return. Point of no return exists where kissing turns into foreplay without enough comfort. So, I mean, and then he goes on and on about it. Um... He says it's best not to begin foreplay until you have the comfort and privacy necessary to transition naturally to sex. Um, kissing prematurely, as kissing prematurely turns into foreplay, it's time to push her off of you. Okay, let her know that it's not the time or place, and you want to get to know her better, etc. So, guys, I, you know, including myself, my, this might sound fucking stupid. All right, I used to think this was stupid because you're like, why would I stop the chick from hooking up? Okay, but. If you have not done this qualitative stuff, which I talk about in the anti slut defense video, which is really important, it's my last video, um, watch that, and that will cue you in on how to do these um, 
qualitative comfort building activities so that in, in lines and stuff like that so that you can uh, breach the threshold and so that she won't feel the spires anymore. So, so I mean, that, this is all pretty self-explanatory. Um, his solution is, is to spend four to ten hours of comfort building. My solution is to have a qualitative requisite amount of comfort that can be done using the strategies I talk about in my anti-slot defense video. But as you can see, many of you can relate to this, that if you get into shit too soon, you're going to lose all your girls. Like I have clients coming to me, they're like, oh, I'm losing all my girls, okay? Um, if you make the chick feel like a piece of meat or if you fuck her before she's like mentally there at, you know, at that comfort level, then this is the kind of shit that's going to happen, okay? So I hope that was helpful. Um, watch the video, really. It's going to be linked in a moment at the end on the anti-slut defense. That gives the exact strategies for how to um, reach that qualitative threshold of comfort so that you do not, um, you know, end up with a buyer's remorse situation and, and she does not do too, things too soon where she's going to regret them after. Okay, please like and subscribe below. I fucking <laughs> meant to record this earlier as the fucking sun is setting when she's going to fuck the green screen. Who gives a shit? Anyways, thank you guys. Uh, I will see you during the week. I'm, I'm committing 100% to doing an infield breakdown this week. So that's going to be back in action. Thank you guys so much. Let's make it to 10K subs. I will see you guys during the week.